Now let's take a look at the fluid width layout. I'm just going to take this page and convert it. So maybe I'll actually start by unpinning this guy here. I'll just be selecting and we'll go to page properties. And it's set at fixed width, so let me switch that over to fluid width. And you might have noticed there, all of a sudden the breakpoint width became active. And we have what's called minimum width. Just to cut to the chase, the breakpoint width is the uh, browser width, if you will, that determines when a layout could potentially change. And that's what we call responsive design, where you do multiple layouts based on the browser width. And those limits, if you will, are known as the breakpoints. Now, we'll do that in another lesson, but for now we're using the default settings. And the minimum height is set to 300. So I'm going to use all the default settings here, but we have switched over to fluid width. Now what that implies is that I can conceivably take some graphics and photos maybe, as well as text, and have them kind of gradually change as the browser is changing in width and size as well. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate that. And I'll also demonstrate the pinning that is different when we use fluid width. So again, we'll just grab this graphics of the hands. And by default, it's pinned to the left. So let's just take a quick look and see what that gives us. Oh yes, before we take a look, associated with these three pins, you notice there's not six, but only three left, center, and right, we have this subsetting, if you will, under resize. Right now it's set to none, but if it was appropriate, I could use responsive width. This one would use responsive width and height, but let's check it out with that not selected yet. And we also have the option to stretch any graphic to the width of the browser. All right, so we'll leave that set to none, pin to the left, and let's have a quick peek. Okay, so there it is. It looks centered in that. But once I get to where, again, the graphic is shrinking the page, and this time, actually, it's shrinking the page and not just collapsing upon it. Even though these elements are not being reduced in size, the actual page is shrinking. You can't really detect that here, but that's what's taking place in a fluid width layout. Now this thing again was pinned to the left so it will not change its distance from the left and I don't believe it will from the top either. No it will not from the top either. Now once I get sort of that default page size, that 960, then my page expands out and then I can see the margins getting larger around it. But if I get smaller than the 960, the page is actually shrinking and not just being folded upon. And you can see my elements are centering. I mean, at a certain point, I may overlap some elements. All right, so let's go back and let's try a couple of different settings here. I'll highlight the hand again. This time I will set it to responsive width and height. And we'll take a look at that. And what should happen is that once my page reach its, reaches its minimum, if you will, the graphic will also change in response to that. So let's get that page so we only see yellow. Check out the hand. It's actually getting smaller. Now it is pinned to the left, so it's going to keep that relative position to the left, but it's responding because the width of this page is truly now only this width, so relatively speaking, that has stayed the same size with respect to the page width. So it's shrinking in conjunction. And I can apply this effect to all the graphics on the page, and I could apply it to some degree to the text as well and we can deal with the text slightly in a couple of different ways in fact. So let's go back here and I guess I'll just pin it to the center just to try a different pinning. We'll quick, quickly look at that. More or less it looks the same until the page gets to the point where it starts shrinking. Again a similar result but this time it's actually staying centered and not relative to the left. And it would be the same for the other pin on the right. We'll very quickly check that one. And it's pretty subtle at this size, I guess. But it is keeping its distance from the right. And you can notice it here when it starts to push over to the left and maintains that distance from the right. Okay, so that's pinning in a fluid layout. And it's also a responsive um, application, if you will to the sizes, so you can resize responsively with width and height. 
And depending on the object response of width may occur, I believe I can apply that to one of these cubes. Let me try that on the cube. So I'll pin that to... I can actually use the resize even with no pinning, and I believe the default is that it stays centered, to be honest. Now, certain browsers may present it a little differently, so you might want to expressly pin it. I'm going to pin it to the left, and I'm actually just going to move it a little, a little bit over here. And let's just go with responsive width. Okay, so right now it looks normal. Again, I anticipate it will change if I start to get smaller than that 960, which is when I hit the yellow. And there you can see it is shrinking, but relatively speaking, the left side is not budging from the left side of the browser. And up and down does not affect it either. It's just left to right, which affects relative position to the right in this case, as well as relative size to the page. Okay. We'll try the other one here. We'll try both responsive width and height. And as you can probably anticipate, it shrinks proportionally now. But it's still pinned to the left, therefore it will never get any closer than that established number of pixels. If I wanted to get closer, I'd have to pin it either to the center or to the right. So let's do that very quickly. I'll just pin it to the right this time. And you can see already it moved in accordance. And if my page is beyond 960, it keeps its relative spot in the page. And again, once the page starts to be modified, getting squeezed, those graphics, so two of these graphics have the responsive width and height, and one doesn't. So you can see you can have it on or off, or even on simple graphics, you can have X and Y change. Now, let me make the page long again. All right, and the pinning is still to the left or to the right here, and this one is also to the right, actually. Let's just see what that does. So they will scroll out at this time. And I believe in fluid design, if I actually didn't want to scroll past it, I would have to use another technique to lock it down. And we, we will do that in another lesson, but it has to do with scroll effects. And you can lock things down with scroll effects. So right now it is limited sort of to the width. I can't control the scroll. Where on a fixed width layout, I can actually pin it relative to the top left. This one I cannot. Now if I was to go none, it should just stay its original size. And there we go. So that's pinning and some of the basics of a fluid width layout and you can sort of see what some of the potential is on that.